Hello again folks, um, third video for today. Um, these are some of my built up vintage kits that I have um, acquired over the past few years. Um, I managed to get this um, this whole lot actually from eBay, um, from a guy uh, up near London, in uh, over here in the UK. Um, he built them himself when he was a, a boy, uh, back in the mid 60s. Um, to various degrees. Some of these have been stripped down now, some of them are stripped down. This one is still built uh, and a couple of the others which I'll show you in a sec. Um, um, just great to see some of the original box art from the 60s. I love the box art, I think it's great. And um, yeah, there's a couple of rarer kits. Some of them are really common, some have been re-released about a thousand times since the 60s. Um, but I think it's always good to um, to see vintage kits as they were. And don't forget, these were, be these were built back in but 1965, uh, so he reckons when he was a child. Um, so yeah, interested to see his um, take on how the models should be built. I'll get the first one to go, just a sec. So firstly we've got this um, Ravel uh, 56 Ford pickup, um, which I believe is still in the range. I think it's the um, Daddy Ed Roth um, shop truck kit that you can get now with the uh, the white truck with the flames up the side um, so yeah this kit is the one that uh, everything opens on it so it's a, it's a, show you some of the box art on the side um, kit came originally with two engines the uh, 57 T-Bird engine and a Pontiac engine I think the only engine that I've got in this one is the Pontiac engine if I believe right I could be wrong no actually no sorry it's got the forward engine in it um, yeah so there we go just show you around the size of the box and check out these features it says yeah we've got a surfboard uh, there were some custom grills and bits and pieces unfortunately a lot of these bits are gone um, he built it as he saw fit um, back in 1965 didn't do too bad a job to be fair um, we'll show you there we go um, it's quite a nice truck actually um, whether these wheels are standard with the kit or if they come from another kit of the era I'm not too sure but the paintwork for the um, for the time is still absolutely fantastic um, to be fair the other kits I've got that came from the same seller um, he hasn't painted so whether he got this one done by his dad or a family member I'm not sure um, we've got some glue marks around the windscreen but um, you know standard fare back then with the old tube glue that you used to get but no this is quite a nice kit um everything still opens um it's all there um nice panel gaps there not <laughs> um yeah it's a nice little kit um it's complete as well amazingly um chassis work is there um i suppose i could tear this one down and rebuild it at some point if i wanted to but the corner issue it's so nice that i don't really want to touch it I think it's nice to leave it as a piece of history. And it has got the surfboard. Oh, yes. So, there we go. Um, you can put the surfboard in the back and uh, let it fall over. There we go. Um, yes, we've got the surfboard. So, yeah, that's the first one. Um, okay, that was the second kit. Okay, second, we've got the AMT 36 Ford customising kit. Um, this is original trophy series kit. Um, that can be built as an authentic top-up or top-down stock roadster. Um, this kit has just been re-released as well, I believe, by AMT, round two. Um, uh, I think they've included the chop top again and some other bits and pieces that you haven't been able to get for years. Um, but yeah, there we go, show the uh, box art for you. Um, just love these old boxes, I think they're absolutely great. Uh, this one's not in the best of condition, to be fair, it's all torn, but um, still. It is over 50 years old, I suppose. So, um, yeah, this one actually has been stripped down. Um, the kit is in there, as you can see. Um, it's just standard 36 Ford. Um, it's all there, all the bits and pieces. I like to sort of bag everything up and box things up into individual boxes just to tidy it, just to keep it all tidy, uh, ready to build um, if I want to, or restore. Um, the instructions on this kit are great. I'm not sure if the newer reissue uh, comes with this type of instruction sheet, I'm not sure, but um, you know, it's like a red and white sort of instruction sheet um, which shows you all the different ways of building the model. On the back it's got um, some uh, advanced building tips by uh, Mr George Barris, 
um, tells you how to use different kits and different parts of the era uh, from AMT. But um, yeah, great instructions. And um, there we go. Um, other AMT trophies, cute series kits available, the 40 Ford and the um, Model T, etc. And also the um, customising kits that are available at the time, um, which were the line of annuals that were available back in the early 60s. Um, so there you go, yeah, well, let's move on to the next kit. Okay, up next is um, two uh, kits of the uh, the Juice kits, the 32 Fords. Um, I think these were released in either the late 50s or early 60s, and these are the original boxes um, from the, f may have been the first releases, I'll let somebody else tell me that because I'm not uh, completely genned up on the uh, history of kits. Um, okay, so you've got the Sport Roadster, um, which again, fantastic box art, showing you how you can build different versions of the uh, of the kit. And it comes there with uh, a lot of the stock parts, stock custom, custom and competition, and uh, the decal sheet that was available at the time. Um, yeah, there we go. So we'll have a quick look at this one. Again, nice old decal sheet. Decal sheet? Idiot. Sorry, nice instruction sheet um, showing you can build it as a, uh, a stock roadster, a street rod, or... Uh, a modified roaster for salt um, salt racing, salt lake racing, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, these older instruction sheets are just so much more detailed than what we get these days. Um, absolutely brilliant there. Okay, there we go. And um, on the back, again, it shows you a lot of the custom parts that are available in the kit. Or, or standard parts, custom parts. And other kits available, which is pretty much... Um, like the last kit I've shown you. Now, um, the lad decided to build this one as a um, as a custom. It's like a street rod, basically. Um, I've kept it as is, um, just literally because it's over 50 years ago he built this one. And um, I think he did a pretty good job, to be fair. And I'm, I just don't really want to touch it. A um, bit delicate. Missing a wheel, unfortunately, which I have got in the box, but is a bit broken up. And the grill shell is also in the box. But, um, yeah, you can see that um, this is very of its time, um, even with the roof with the decals on. Um, he uh, certainly had good fun building this one. The chrome is um, showing a lot of age. It's uh, lost a lot of its chrome in places, but, uh, like I said, these kits are over 50 years old. So, um, yeah. I think he did a cracking job with this, and I'm really loath to actually restore it. Um, I just want to leave it as it is. So what do you guys think? Would you restore this, or would you leave it as it is? Let me know. Okay, right to the next one. Which is the uh, 32 Ford Juice. Uh, completely new, so it says completely new. Um... This one again um, shows you that is fantastic. I'd love to do a version of that kit at some point. Um, I know this kit has been released again over the years, countless number of times, so I might be able to do that if I can find some uh, decals or make my own. Um, yeah, so there we go. Just show you the box art as usual. Pretty much the same as the uh, last 32 Ford, actually. Inside, again, he's built this one as a custom street rod. Again, he's done quite a good job. And um, there we go, instructions, which are pretty much the same as last time, so I'm not going to go into uh, into that one too far. But there we go. Um, again, right, so here we go. This is what we have for this one. Again, this kit was built when this uh, this uh, chap was about, um, about 10 years old. Um, the guy is um, sort of late 50s, early 60s now, so... Um, yeah, again, I think he did a great, a great job with this one. Um, very of its time, not painted, bare plastic, bare styrene. Um, and um, yeah, he used looks like he's used pretty much every single decal that was on the sheet. But um, again, another kit that I, I just can't uh, bring myself to tear to bits to restore. There we go. Right, on to the next one. Okay, uh, this is the um, 65 Corvette kit, Stingray. Um, 
It says manufactured on the kit. It says manufactured by Airfix, created by MPC. Uh, reason for that being obviously um, in Great Britain, the um, main manufacturer for plastic kits back in the sixties was um, Airfix, and I think they obviously uh, borrowed the uh, moulds from MPC or shared. I don't know what they did, but anyway, uh, we had a few um, MPC model kits from the sixties reboxed as Airfix over here. Uh, again, fantastic box art showing a drag Corvette with the chute open, uh, slowing down after a run, I should imagine. Um, so yeah, we got um, on this kit we had um, we got a driver figure. Um, it shows you all the different um, options that were available: steerable wheels. It actually has uh, coil spring suspension as well, which is amazing for an old kit, a working suspension, should I say? Uh, so there we go. This the box art. There we go, and that shows you the uh, operating front suspension, which uh, is uh, very clever for its time, and the parachute. So let's take a quick look at this one. This one again has been uh, torn apart. This one um, was in a hell of a state, um, so I did actually uh, strip this one down the best I can, and I have actually started to restore it, but um, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like anyway. So, yep, there we go. This is the very recognisable NPC instructions, as you can see, even though it says Airfix. It is pure MPC. Um, we've got the um, different options, etc., that you can build as, and the uh, drag wheels, etc. And a lot of the uh, optional parts, unfortunately, when I bought these kits, a lot of the optional parts over the years have gone missing. So I only really get the parts that come with the kit. Um, but it's all there. The chrome does need redoing, so I'll have to, um, I don't know, experiment with Alclad, etc. Which is something I've never done yet. Oh, well. well, there's a dashboard. Um, I started to do that one, but uh, as you can see, it's tangled up with the uh, parachute, which is a, a blown plastic um, moulding. Which is uh, so there we can have a flying, uh, flying dashboard. <laughs> um, the kit itself, I'm just going to show you it in the box. Um, is um, I'm not too sure if it was ever re-released. I'm not sure. A lot of NPC kits were, but this is, um, like I say, an original issue again from 1965. Is all there uh, with the engine, um, which I've started to uh, paint up in detail. It's a nice kit again. So uh, again, that's another one for the pile for Sunday. Okay, last two for now. Uh, we have a uh, a 1965 Dodge Monaco um, hardtop kit from NPC. I'm led to believe this was actually NPC's um, first ever kit. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not uh, like I said. I'm not an expert on these sort of things, but um, it um, it is um, from 1965. It is from that year. The box is in great shape, actually. Um, to show you some of the things on the side, it's got a plastic display stand, uh, which is um, I think it works off a of rubber band principle, um, which uh, it does actually work. I've got it inside the box. Um, there we go. The side panel, well, it's just the same as the front, basically, and. On the side, um, Dean Jeffries says, um, there you go, uh, the kit came moulded in like a gold plastic and I think the idea was you just uh, whacked a coat of uh, clear over it and you had best of show, there we go, Dean Jeffries said, so it must be right. Um, so let's open this kit up, let's have a look. Did I say the box was in great shape? I was lying, sorry. The inner box is knackered. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, so uh, there we go with the instruction sheet. 1965 Dodge Monaco. Um, there we go. Um, again, this one I have um, stripped down into bits and pieces, um, but it gives you an idea of what um, what you can get. The only thing that's broken on the kit is a event post there, which I can uh, easily fix. Um, the coat, I mean, he obviously did coat this in some sort of last lacquer um, back in the 60s, which unfortunately over the years has gone like a putrid green colour, so it now looks like sick green gold. Um, so, yeah, beautiful. Um, so, yeah, we'll be redoing this one at some point. Hopefully a bath in some uh, oven cleaner will solve that. Um, there we go. Uh, there's one engine, very badly painted in blue. And um, the interior parts... Uh, there's the uh, wind-up um, stand, which does work. Um, yeah, a lot of these pieces are okay, but the chrome work's gone, so I have to, um, like I said, I've stripped the chrome and uh, 
redo it in Alclad or um which I've never used yet, but then there we go, it's the first time for everything. But yeah, so that's that one. And uh, last one coming up. Okay, last but not least, this is um AMT65 Hemi Charger Dodge Coronet kit. Um again, fantastic artwork on the front, which is uh of the Economy Gone and Ram Chargers uh, drag racing teams. Which is all the rage um, back in the uh, early to mid 60s, the super stock classes, etc. Um, this kit, I'm led to believe, is actually quite rare. And this one has been built up. Um, it was built up by the um, by the chap back in the uh, mid 60s, back in 1965 when he bought the kit brand new. Um, we've got a 426 uh, Hemi Charger engine, which is um, a very um, detailed engine kit actually for the year of this kit. Um, I think this may be an MPC kit as well, actually, but I've read a couple of forums that it was originally an MPC kit that AMT um, had lo lo well, loan of the tool, or, or MPC designed it for AMT, I'm not too sure, but um, the instructions certainly give it away as being a uh, MPC style kit, anyway. Um, we've got the old advert for the um, AMT lacquer paint that you could get at the time, some of the um, options available in the kit. So let's have a quick look. Like I said, this one has been built up, so uh, it might look rough and ready, but uh, it's nearly 50 years old, so here we go. There's the instructions that I was uh, talking about, so as you can see, it is 